Hey and welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt, the printing nerd, and in this video you will learn how to assemble the upper part of the 100. In the first part of the series we already assembled the tool head. We have also prepared the built-in components for the high speeds of the 100. This video aims to assemble the complete top frame so that we can test the gantry. Ok, let's go! But before we can start, we have to clean up the parts from the support structures. After we've cleaned all the parts, we can start adding heat inserts into them. If you have never done this before and would like to know what you have to consider when doing this, take a look at the info card. There I linked a video explaining step by step how to use heat inserts. Next, I would like to give you a brief overview of where we have installed heat inserts. Let's start with the front part. First, the heat inserts for the side connectors. Next up are the heat inserts for the Z-Rod connectors. These are new. I've added them so we have an easy way to swap out the rods on the Z-axis. If you watched the video here, I'm already working on the next big project in which I want to find out if cheap rods from AliExpress are worse than those from well-known manufacturers. For this I have ordered rods from 9 different manufacturers. 4 well-known brands, 5 no-names from AliExpress in significant quantities and I will put them to test. If you don't want to miss that video, please subscribe and click on the bell icon. For those who want to try the latest iteration of the printer, check out Patreon. There you will find the newest blueprint. But be warned. These are better parts that definitely need fine tuning. For everyone else, you have to be patient. I'm planning the next public release of the printer at the end of fall. Next up is the back part. First, the heat inserts for both back connectors. Next, the heat inserts for the side connectors. And last, the heat inserts for the BMG extruder and also an addition heat insert for a clamp to improve cable management. In addition to heat inserts, there are also nut inserts in the top frame. I made this design decision in places where I thought nuts would give us the ability to expand the printer more easily. For example, the nuts on the back of the printer. Imagine this. You want to enhance the cooling ability of your printer. Therefore, you design a fan duct for a 120mm blower fan. In order to be able to attach the fan duct to the top frame, you simply use longer screws for the rod holders and fix the fan duct with them. And last, the heat inserts in the gantry. First, the two heat inserts on the back. These ones are used to remove the rod on the x-axis. So, if you try to pull out the rod with your bare hands, you might notice that this won't work, since the rods are press fitted into the gantry carriage. To be able to remove the rods without rough force and maybe damaging the carriage or the rod itself, I've designed a release mechanism. Take a M3 screw, screw it into the heat insert and you will see that the screw is slowly pushing the rod out of the carriage. Alright, now that we have prepared all the parts, we are ready to assemble the top frame.
this part we will build the idler pulleys for the belt tensioners and the gantry. Starting first with the belt tensioners. We thread a M5 30mm screw into the case, followed by a M5 washer, two F695 bearings, another washer, a separator, two F695 bearings and last a washer at the end. The last washer is a bit fiddly to insert. You might need a bit pressure to fit it into its place. Next the bearing stacks for the gantry. Here we need one M5 30mm screw and one M5 40mm screw. Both stacks are similar. First M5 washer followed by two F695 bearings and covered by another M5 washer. It's important to hand pick the best M5 washers for the bearing stacks. I've bought a pack of 100 washers and noticed that the tolerances are not always accurate and some of them were also banned. Keep in mind to hand pick the best ones for the bearing stacks. Next up the linear bearings. Here we put the bearings in the middle of the gantry carriage and thread the covering plate with 4 M3 12mm screws in. There it is important that all screws are tightened with the same force. After assembly take the rod and slide it through the carriage. The movement of the rod should be a bit stiffer compared to the linear rod alone. In the first step we take two rods and press them into the left side of the gantry. Next we push the tool head onto the rods. It's important here that the front fan of the tool head and the open side of the gantry carriage look at the same direction. Next slide a rod into the linear bearing for the Y axis and screw them tight with two M3 35mm screws on each side of the top frame. After the left carriage is attached we insert a rod into the linear bearing of the right carriage press it into the two rods on the x-axis and screw the rod on the y-axis to the top frame. Now that everything is attached, we test our construction. Here it's important that both axes can be moved without major resistance. Pay particular attention to the beginnings and ends of the rods to see if the resistance increases there. This is an indication that something went wrong. In general, the resistance of each axis should be linear over the whole rod. The gantry is now finished as this video. Stay tuned for the next part of this assembly guide where we assemble the bottom part of the frame. To not miss that, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. This project is 100% open source and it's only possible because of the support of our Patreons. They help us to cover the material costs for all the parts we use for the builds you see in these videos. If you want to support this project, you might consider a subscription at Patreon as well. Another way to support this project would be to hit the like button and comment on this video to help us be visible on the YouTube algorithm for suggesting this video to other people. So that's it for today. Stay tuned for more content and now get out of here.